Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. It's Seps here and today we are actually going to check out um we're going to check out a, a mini documentary actually. If you clicked on this, uh it's probably because you are already an Eva Cassidy fan and and maybe you joined me in uh listening to to Eva Cassidy for the first time. If you haven't, I'll try to, you know, link those those videos here and and put some cards. I'm really bad at doing that. But I'm sure you could also just look up Seb's Duran, Eva Cassidy. Um, we're checking this out uh, thanks to to Terry. The link to this video is going to be in the description down below. Terry, thank you for sharing your passion. And what we're going to do, we're going to, you know, take some frequent pauses here and, and talk about what we're watching. But, you know, the main thing on the comment section down below, let's uh, let's hang out and talk. Yeah. So we know how uh, how talented she is. Um, Y'all told me already that how heartbreaking her story is. So make sure to to get deeper in this. So let's uh, let's roll this. This is from 2001. The Recording Industry Association named it the number one song of the 20th century. Since Judy Garland first sang it in The Wizard of Oz, the Oscar-winning classic has been identified with her and her alone. Okay. Until now. For the last year or so, radio yep. stations in England have played another version of the song. This spring, the album hit number one on the British pop charts. Cool, the artist man. is an American singer who died in obscurity nearly five years ago. She performed at small clubs and sold tapes of her music from the trunk of her car. Her name is Eva Cassidy. It's amazing how painfully shy, not she was discovered glamorous, if you will. and much to the frustration of record company executives, impossible to pigeonhole. Pop tunes, blues, jazz, gospel, she sang whatever moved her. In an era of brightly packaged stars, think Britney Spears, Eva Cassidy was the polar opposite. Indeed, she never knew fame. That is coming only now, years after she died in the prime of her life. And her version of Over the Rainbow, see if it doesn't give you goosebumps. For my mm -hmm. colleague Dave Marish, Nightline's resident jazz and blues enthusiast, putting together the Eva Cassidy story has been a labor <coughs> of love. <laughs> It really is amazing. I see trees that are green. Wow. Red roses too. I watch them bloom. It's so effortless for her. Oh, me and you and I think to myself. What a wonderful world. Like there's just the bass, the softest drum ever. Eva Cassidy left this world in November. It's that voice that just cap absolutely captures you and captivates you. It's not a scream for attention. It's subtle and soft, but captures your attention more than a scream would. It doesn't beg for attention. It just gets it because it's so beautiful and, I don't know, like sincere. Number 1996, Baby's leaving crying. behind a small group of fans in the Washington, D.C. area and two locally produced CDs. And they'll learn much more. Beyond those narrow boundaries, though, when the singer died at the age of 33, her name was all but unknown, her music all but unheard. It's like Bach. Oh, what a wonderful world. Eva and I met in seventh grade. Or, or uh... We seated next to each other, luckily. There's no hiding place, bro. Ever since Ooh. I could remember her, she loved jazz and blues. Jazz, blues, folk, rock, and gospel were all major sources of Eva Cassidy. I have to check repertoire. out more of her stuff, eh? That sounds so good, dude. But so were classic laments and ballads from American popular music. One song above all. Somewhere. Yeah, this is the video we checked out. Somewhere oh, Over gosh. the Rainbow just was one of our favorites. When I say our, I mean 
her groupies that always followed her wherever her she went. Groupies. <laughs> Ah, so- oh, dude! Like I, I've listened, I've rewatched that video multiple times, and it hits you the same each and every time, dude. She would nail those notes. She sang it yeah. so beautifully. There were always tears in the eyes of the audience. The rainbow. So it was to be, almost two years after her death. In a country an ocean away from her home, that over the rainbow moved Eva Cassidy from obscurity to the spotlight. That's so a cool, man. Mine, uh, brought the record to me in the office. Paul Walters uh, is a producer for a popular morning show on the BBC's Radio 2. I thought, oh, fine, OK, put it in the pile. I'll get to it later. And he said, no, I'd like you to listen to it now. So I had to listen to it, and I was absolutely stunned. Suddenly there was a song that, and a voice that stood out a million miles above all the rest. Stop me in my yeah. tracks. I thought, I've got to play this. We've got to have this in the programme. It's the wonderful Eva Cassidy, and uh, old Paulie Walters gets a great deal of the credit for discovering her enormous talent. And you- Terry Wogan is Radio 2's morning star. He played Eva Cassidy's recording of Over the Rainbow unheard on Paul Walters' Say So. It's amazing, man. But he said, okay, fine, we'll, we'll have that next, and we put it on. And he was absolutely amazed as well, stunned. And at the end of the record, to, to our audience of very nearly seven million people every day, he said, isn't that just the most amazing thing you've ever heard? <laughs> One, I need a nylon string guitar so I can just play that. I love her, just the guitar arrangement alone, I love for it to be an accompaniment for, for a voice. But they're they're saying it perfectly, dude. I, I can't, no one can explain how a voice like that can just cap, capture you so so deeply, so easily. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little overwhelmed and emotional here just, just thinking that... Um, Eva Cassidy wasn't trying hard to be famous. She just, she had a talent. She had a beautiful voice and enjoyed playing. And so she would just perform uh, for the love of it. And she probably didn't know that the rest of us were going to f- hear about her. Again, it's, it's, she's our Bach, right? It was after the fact that we realized we missed out on a genius. But now we don't have to miss out. I heard Eva Cassidy was, um, like a lot of people in this country, I think, through the Terry Wogan show on Radio 2. Well, the best in pop and rock from the last Mark Hagen decade. produces BBC Television's top top weekly Pops music show, band. Top of the Pops 2. So Heard the record, loved it, got the record. I thought, this would be cool. a fabulous person to, to show on television. Unfortunately, Hagen thought, there is no videotape of Eva. Until almost two years later, he found and broadcast this homemade video so that's of how this Eva happened. singing over the rainbow at Washington's Blues Alley. We put it on the program on the 13th of December, I think it was, in 2000. And as soon as the program came off air, the switchboard was jammed, and this went on and on and on. Wait, so this was recorded in like 1996 on just a camera, and that and it sounds that good? Six weeks later, I was still getting Calls. I thought, well, perhaps I should show it again. <laughs> perhaps I should show it again. So I put it on top of the Pops 2 again. The same reaction again, but even more so. Um, and that's still going on today. This spring, Eva Cassidy's CD Songbird with Over the Rainbow on it was the number one selling popular album in the United Kingdom. 
That's For amazing. several weeks, Eva had as many as five CDs listed in the British Top 150 for pop albums, an achievement of Beatles or Rolling Stones proportions. Oh as her rediscovery has bounced back to the American side of the Atlantic, CD sales here have taken off. Songbird has passed 200,000, and Eva's total U.S. CD sales are close to half a million. She was afraid then what fame would do to her. She was really kind of afraid of it. Wow. And I have to kind of laugh because this is the way I think Eva would have loved it. Everybody else does the talking for her. All she does is sing. Cooking with the big gas that's, flame. Hey! That's cool. Thank you, Mary. It's true. Eva What'd was afraid say? to get on stage. And she knew she needed to improve her ability, her shyness, her assertiveness, her stage presence. And she knew she needed to do some solo gigs. Oh my gosh! Eva was soon singing regularly in small clubs, thinking about recording, which is what took her to the studio run by Chris Biondo. And even there, Eva was at first mic shy. She uh, wouldn't come in, and uh, she just kind of stood in the shadows, and I thought there was something wrong with her that she wasn't, you know, a singer, just somebody was coming by to, you know, try to sing. And uh, she went in and just blew me away right away. Um, everything she sang from the minute I turned on the mic to when she left was amazing. I in the oh, cool, man. Also left amazed when Chris played Eva's tape was Chuck Brown, a DC legend in go-go and soul music. I hear this beautiful, mellow voice coming out of this tape. Just took me right out from the very beginning. That's so cool, dude. Soon, Chuck and Eva were collaborating. And Chuck says this young white girl was not only inspiring him, but teaching him to sing jazz. Dude, she's such a great guitarist, too, man. We talked and uh, made arrangements to start uh, doing something. We picked a few tunes. Oh, she was very, very uh, stylistic in her own way and uh, very precise on her, her, her uh, tone and her melody. Uh, very melodic, the way she strays away from the melody, comes back to it. And all of this just fascinated me, you know, because I never tried to do none of that. Oh, yeah. Shy Eva loved singing with Chuck. She could hide behind his showmanship on stage and ride behind his reputation to bigger and better bookings, like Washington's Why are they talking over this? Jazz wanna... Club <laughs> Blues Alley. Let's give a big Blues Alley welcome to Miss Eva Cassidy. The club has been here almost 40 years, and uh, we've been blessed with hearing almost all the great names in jazz, the singers, over the years. A lot of the staff has been here a long time, so they're not easily swayed. Heaven, I'm in heaven. Uh, the first Gosh. night, first song, when she started singing, I noticed... Sorry, I need to run that back. Again, it's just so simple. What, why, how does it do that? How does she do that? I don't know. The only way to describe it is like, she's just, she just has it. She was given a gift. I'm in heaven. Uh, the first and night, first song, when <laughs> she started singing, I noticed... The staff all stopping in their tracks and looking at the like, stage and looking track. at one another. And we both, all of us thought at that time, wow, this is something. When we're we're to like a blues or jazz club, that would be so cool. Oh, I need to do that. With Eva now on the pop charts in the UK and popping up in People and other major magazines and on network TV in the States, Ralph Camilli remembers the girl with no stage patter, no stage presence, who dressed like she was going for a hike. <laughs> I'm sure if she were alive and having this notoriety now, we'd be joking right here at this table about how she would be driving the execs crazy about, uh, move a little more, Eva. Why don't you wear this, Eva? I mean, she wasn't that way and wouldn't have been that way. And uh, I don't know that they would have known what to make of her. It's almost like, it's almost like the way this all went was perfect for what we needed. You can tell the sun in his jealous sky when we walked in fear. Wow. 
That's is the Especially thing, you right? To the music, you look at the pictures, you get the feeling of just you know lighter than air and more more delicate than chiffon. Uh, not the complete picture. Just the opposite. Uh, she was tough, very tough. Uh, tough in her mind and, and tough in her body. You know, Ooh. she worked for years at a nursery and uh, was extraordinarily strong. Will you stay with me? Eva applied That's all probably that. where it comes from. She's singing soft, but she's actually incredibly powerful in the mix of the two, right, maybe? Toughness and all that stubbornness when it came to selecting her song list, says her pianist, Lenny Williams. I know she had to emotionally connect with the lyrics to sing the song. That was a prerequisite. I mean, she had to like it musically, but, but the, a lot of times the message of the song, the lyrics, was the make or break thing. You know, if wow. she didn't really connect with it, she wasn't going to do it. That Eva enjoyed and insisted on singing jazz and pop, folk, and gospel songs drove record companies crazy. This is fantastic, I came bro. The record company uh, he came from. Um, he came down and sat there and watched her sing and looked at her and said, uh, "What do you want to do?" And she looked at him and said, um, oh, "Pretty much anything." He goes, well, "What do you want to do? Tell me the kind of you know the style you want to go for." And she goes, "Pretty much anything but that pop crap." That we never heard from him again. <laughs> oh man, I love this. Gosh, this is so cool to watch. One record company guy who kept coming back was Bruce Lundvall, the head of the top jazz label, Blue Note. Uh, I got a call from a fellow, so he brought her to my office, but he didn't have anything to play, so she stood in the middle of the room and sang Amazing Grace. <coughs> and I, it was just chilling. Amazing was, just, was the right oh word. Oh my lord. Uh, and I said, oh my god, what, did, you know, what a voice, what an extraordinary voice, you know. And that was the beginning. Lundvall tried pairing Eva with a Philadelphia band, Pieces of a Dream but the music didn't work. So he asked Eva, what are the songs that work for you? They were all over the place. There was a gospel piece, there was a country song, there was a standard over the rainbow, etc. I said, well, the voice is just spectacular. I mean, but we're a jazz label. Had she been willing to make just a jazz record, we would have done it probably right away without question, but that wasn't her nature. Blue Note decided not to offer Eva Cassidy a contract. That I made a mistake and a serious one, because she was a great, great talent. Lundvall had little time yeah. to realize his error. In the spring of 1996, just months after her Blues Alley date had been turned into a CD, Eva started walking with a cane because of persistent pain in her hip. The cause was cancer. She was given just months to live. What the frick, dude? Again, I knew she passed, and you guys probably told me it was cancer, but what the? Bruce Lundvall heard the bad news, and called. Her mom let me speak to her. And I asked her to forgive me for not signing her. And I couldn't hold it. I couldn't contain myself. It was one of the most uh, difficult moments I've ever had. And she said, no, no, it's okay. You know, we were together. Eva's friends threw a benefit for her at a club called The Bayou. Her parents, Barbara and Hugh, remember Eva rising to the occasion. And she saw all these people and, uh, you know, they had come out to see her and she was just totally amazed that they would all show up, you know, all of her good friends and uh, so many people donated their services and their talents. And then the honoree moved to the microphone. Well, she made her way up on stage, had some help getting up onto a stool, picked up her guitar, looked out at the people in the audience. The love was all love. Of course, everybody's crying. She announced that she had just taken a huge dose of morphine so she could handle this. It's the last time she sang in public. And what did she sing? I see trees that are green. There she was performing and uh, singing It's a Wonderful World. And there, there wasn't a dry eye in this place. Oh, I'm about to start crying, dude. Really incredible. Oh my gosh, dude. What a wonderful world. It, 
was more than the, the medicine that got her up there. I mean, she was very high on, on getting up there and, and, uh, and uh, doing the tete-a-tete -tete with the audience. Oh, gosh, dude, I can't imagine being a... They're like... But they're really saying... <clears throat> Six weeks later, she was dead. So many of Eva Cassidy's favorite songs, Over the Rainbow, Bridge Over Troubled Water, People Get Ready, were about how it isn't over when it's over, that death doesn't always get the last word. It turns out that wasn't just her songs, it was her story. And I think to myself, what a one. What a wonderful world. I'm Dave Marish for Nightline in Washington. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, what a wonderful world. Oh gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. It's one of the most hauntingly beautiful stories and voices ever man um where i'm getting emotional is just that you know sometimes um god is merciful to us by allowing us to keep memories of such a powerful person man doesn't feel merciful that you know that she had to go through what she did and we had to lose her so early but i i, I do believe in a plan i do not believe that this life is is the end um, i'm one of those that believes there's work to be done after and but then also things just happen but at least mercifully we have these memories going through these comments the most powerful music moment i have ever experienced she was a great person and i am proud to have called her a friend i hear her sing what a wonderful world seriously we only listened to a few seconds there at the end and i was already losing it it just took like five ten i'm just i'm starting to cry just freaking thinking about it dude um it's it's not hyperbole to say she probably has the most powerful voice i've ever heard which is ironic because it's it's a ten she sings tenderly she takes you to heaven instantly bro so i think you know all of us need those things that we go to when maybe uh, anxiety and stress are just uh, getting a little too much what i think i'm going to start doing bro um it, when i'm feeling those things set up the lighting similar to where i am right there go sit on that couch back there and just put on headphones and listen to to that with my with your eyes closed and how can you not feel that everything is going to be okay after that what did you guys think um anxious to hear from you all thank you for uh <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me here oh much love everybody life is good we are so lucky